another early morning. It is currently half past seven. Um, and that is early for me, so it's time to get some uh, bits of stuff done before we get going. There's nothing much on the show today because it is Thursday. Um, and obviously everything doesn't start properly until tomorrow, so it'll give me a chance to get caught up on loads of stuff. And um, and we already went over <laughs> in Daz's van last night, bless him, and he just stood there. We were all chatting away. And he just stood there and cooked burgers for everybody and gave us dog bowls with burgers in and cheese and then sauces on the table because... He loves hosting in that van. It's like it's just made his dreams come true and he can now literally just host all of his friends in there in comfort and yeah, it's brilliant. So not too much of a late night, but it was uh, it was a nice nice catch up with everybody and I got to meet Gemma and Campbell from Highlands to Hammock to us on uh, on this bit with us as well. So yeah, absolutely brilliant start to the to the show bit. But first, we drink coffee and work. And it's one of the rare times you get to come out and nobody else is around apart from security. So we've got Tash and John, Gemma and Campbell, me, Daz, John, and then Tash's little van. There. Because John has to leave to go back early, so Tash is stopping. And it's also quite empty as well, if you look. So there's not many people here yet. But um, I'm fairly sure that today it's going to get going. I'm trying not to whiz around too quickly. So there's club, club stands and whatever. I've never been to Peterborough before. So it's, uh, yeah, it'll be a good thing to see because it is a proper show show with camping and everything. So, and the very last one, unfortunately, because they've, the, uh, they've sold the showground off. Right, diesel heater is really noisy. Find that coffee. Hello and welcome to my van on this dreary, miserable day. So what a better day to start talking about shit. <laughs> it's got to be said. Um, you know, I'm not taking the piss or anything, but I need to tell you about my toilet. So, so many people ask me which toilet I chose. I have just mentioned it briefly, but I've not done um, much of a review with it because I wanted to use it for a while. I'm going to do a mini comparison to John's toilet as well because um, they are two different. Even though they are both separating toilets, they are two different different beasts entirely. Um, mine cost £279 and it is a Blue Diamond Nature Calls separating toilet. Or they say it's a composting toilet, but there is no way that with the size of the solids bucket in here, there is no way that there's anything time to compost unless you are going to pour the contents into a composting heap. So, the thing I like about it, Firstly, it was the cheapest one I could find because inherently, we all know, I am a massive skinflint. So I wanted something that was easier to empty. I didn't want a cassette toilet. I wanted something that, because um, I use wee bottles and I'm unashamed to say that that is, it definitely helps prolong however long you need to empty whichever toilet that you have. And on that note, I know that it, emptying them carefully is straightforward. So having a larger urine container that I can empty separately, again, will be very, very straightforward. And also these dog poo bins round everywhere. So being able to empty the solids frequently, so you're not taking a massive bag of poo around with you wherever you go. Uh, we've got some black bags, so they look discreet. You can't see the contents. So dropping one of those whenever you see a dog poo bin is nice and straightforward. And at the end of the day, the people that empty those bins are expecting it to be full of poo. So it's a nice, simple transition. So yes, the first thing I can say about this Blue Diamond toilet is that it does not do well as far as marks and scratches and things are concerned because it's got a semi-soft plastic exterior. And even getting it out of the box, it looked like it had already been, uh, been used because it had scuffs and bangs and things on it. So that was my first thing that I noticed. The second thing I noticed was one of the clips on the side of the toilet were broken. So I had to go through a little bit of a round robin, but we just went to Blue Diamond directly, sent them a picture of the broken clip and the receipt from when we bought the toilet and they sent us a new clip out and it arrived in about nine days, I think. So I was well impressed with that. That was a nice, easy thing. I've still not fixed it, but I'll get there eventually. And the third thing I noticed was the lack of an actual seat for the toilet. 
Whereas John's has got maybe, I don't know, two and a half inches, maybe a little bit more of a rim for you to put your bottom on. Whereas this is very thin. You do feel, you can feel it when you sit down. And I've got a fair bit of padding back there and it's not the comfiest of toilet seats. But we're not there for a long time. We're there for a good time, yeah? So that's fine. All in all, though, I really like this toilet. It is so simple with what you need to do with it. So let me show you. So this is the toilet. So in here, this is your urine separator and that's where your solids go. Sawdust in the bottom, it, it just makes it better and it does get rid of any smells. I don't have any smells out of this thing. Let me show you how we get that top off. Okie dokie. So it's nice and easy. Clip, clip. This is the broken one. Clip. Then the whole top comes off. Inside, this is your urine container and this is your solids. To get this out, you have to take your solids bucket out. However, this goes all the way under the solids bucket. So if you can imagine this, you have to really touch it. There's not really anything to grab onto. So I have had to fashion a webbing strap. I have Velcro it to the side so I can lift the bloody thing out. This is the worst part, I think, about this toilet is the shape and size of this urine bottle. In here, you get your lid when you're carrying it round, and then you also get the lid for your solids bin. And then that is what's left. It is literally a self-contained plastic bucket type thing. And the one thing I like about that plastic bucket thing is if there are any spills of any kind, it doesn't go through the bottom. If there are any accidents in this, it stays within its little self-contained bucket, which also means that I can put it in and out of the cupboard, which, you know, is a good thing. A lot of the other ones, too old, like John's for instance, it needs to be fixed against the wall, and I just don't have that space to fix it against the wall. So, we'll put that back in. You have to have that in so the handle falls forward. Otherwise, you can't get the, the thingy off. It's ready to have the lid put back on again. So then you've got this bit. And this is the underside. So I'll just do the, do the clips again. So one, two, three. And then that's done. Nice and straightforward not heavy at all. It holds a decent amount of both kinds, not that I let the solids bucket get full much, but all in all, I like it. I still think the cheapest separating toilet, you know, a, a complete unit being £279 is a bit, but what are you going to do? It's definitely cheaper than all the other ones compared to John. So John has got the separate tiny, got from Woo Woo Waterless Toilets. And that is the next level. So you don't have to look at your poop when you're emptying it. Whereas with that, obviously, as soon as you lift up the toilet seat, you can see your solids. So that's a bit more discreet for stuff like that. When you sit on it, because when you sit and it's got like a pressure button on John's, when you sit down, it opens that flap so things can go in the right places. So that is my Blue Diamond Nature Calls composting slash separating toilet would i recommend it yeah i do you don't sit on the toilet for ages so all in all it's a good one for me and i can back up the customer services um as a buyer from them as well which you know you tried and tested in all the different ways so it's all good stuff right on to less shit topics now so in true shameless fashion it's taking my wee bottle for a walk <laughs> There's an L standpoint just there. So taking this twice a day or however, because obviously I'm using the toilets out and about, is far easier than keeping emptying my toilet. So get one of these. So just driving out of the Peterborough show, um, still on private road. And um, my goodness, I cannot believe I have not been here before 
and I am I am not going to be able to come back again because it has been so good. We've had such a blast. The entertainment that they put on at these Warner shows is is unbelievable. I absolutely danced my socks off with Tash and Cat uh, listening to the Bjorn again and, and all the other stuff. Honestly, it's been it has been an absolute blast. And you know the fact it's in somewhere. I've got a 5G signal, so we've, everyone's been productive as well as having a real good time and letting our hair down as well. So uh, John and I are the last ones left. We are just off to our park up now and um, yeah, we're gonna chill out and get some stuff done. Hopefully I'll get a video edited for you guys. And um, off the back of that, then we should be ready to get further down. We're gonna do our usual thing where we go to uh, Canterbury Park and ride and uh, stay there overnight in preparation to go to France. Um, I, however, if you've seen in John's video already, I've got a massive chip in my windscreen. So I've managed to schedule auto windscreens to come out to the Canterbury Park and Ride and fix my windscreen for me or replace it before we go on the Wednesday. So well chuffed with that. So for now, uh, two hours and 12 minutes drive uh, to our park up, ready for me to get some, uh, some new shoes for Swee in the morning. So that's exciting too. I'm, honestly, I'm so excited. I don't even know how I can contain myself. Well, it's that time. Very tired. It's, <laughs> it's something daft like, uh, I don't know, half nine, it is. <laughs> oh, it's been such an exhausting week because we've just been enjoying spending time with everybody. My diesel heater is on full. But I figured I'd do a quick video to you because I'm just going to get myself in bed. I've started watching Station 19 and I am going to go watch a couple of episodes of that and then go to sleep so I can get up and get some work done before Swee gets his new shoes tomorrow, which is very exciting. But yeah, not recording much today at all. Just driving here and getting stuff done. So a couple of days, a couple of days and we'll be in France. And that is so exciting. I am, I am so excited. So, John and I have been having a plan and a chat to try and see what we can do so we don't duplicate things for you guys. Obviously, not everyone here watches that channel, but you should. Uh, but not everyone there watches me, which is also fine. Um, but yes, you're going to get lots of vloggy chats and other bits of stuff. I'll be my usual fun, entertaining self. And, uh, and then you'll get some lovely travel videos as well. So... On that note, it's time for me to have a wash and brush my teeth and jump in bed. So it is so exciting. Um, I've been on with them this morning checking the tyres I wanted. Um, they couldn't get hold of, but I've got something that's just as good. I'm not going for the big rough ass BFGs of John and everybody else um, because I'm not planning on taking my van anywhere that will do anything like that. So um, I don't want the big grrr, look. That's why I've got a tiny little light bar and not plastered with them, you know, but I do want to make sure that I can drive abroad. I've got the mud and snow rated tyres, they're a little bit beefier. And most of all, I'm going from a 15 to a 16 to be able to correct my speedo because I can be toodling along. I think I'm doing 60 and I'm not, I'm doing like 56. So um, these vans are supposed to come with 16s or they come with 16 inch wheels in Europe but they don't in the UK for whatever reason um, and it's happened every time we've done this before changed to 16s it's corrected the speedo so I am looking forward to that so at least John knows which speed to stay at because I haven't got cruise control either and it must be really frustrating for him so yes exciting times we have 12 minutes from this stop to get to Elite Wheels so off we go
Brazil, big for talking out. Yeah, this. I've had a, um, a stiff wire brush on the uh, forks just to make sure that that's all nice and clean and clear. They are doing an incredibly thorough job. Oh, look. This is why you come here and have a fit of those. Look at this. Kind of serves to get like this anyway, I would say. Oh, my van's dirty. <laughs> Looks like a Tonka toy now. So in my excitement, as I totally forgot to do a walk round of the van with the new shoes on, here's me posing in front of it on a photograph instead. So I hope you love the wheels as much as I do. They have made such a difference to the ride and road handling of the van. Speedo is now spot on and it's like driving on a cushion of air. Looks the part too. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for coming along. I'm off to France in a couple of days, so it's all excited. So now I'm going to crack on, get to Dover Road, park and ride, and I'll take you around there with me. So take care, guys, and I will catch you on the next one.